Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Valerie. And we're at my home. So before we get started on our video today, please take a moment if you haven't already and make sure you subscribe to our channel and just click the button down there to subscribe. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, please go ahead and click the bell. Recently, our house lost power as part of the big PG&E power shutoff here in Northern California. Our home was one of over 700,000 California households impacted. Now, this wasn't just a short power outage where maybe it flickered or went off for a couple hours. This was a shutoff that lasted almost 48 hours. So one of our biggest concerns with the power outage was the food in our refrigerator and how long was it really going to last. So, you know, we were lucky because we were home and we knew that there was an outage. But what if we had been on vacation? We might have just come home and opened our fridge and thought our food was safe to eat. And the problem with that is, is that there's nothing in our refrigerator that records the temperature. So you can get a thermostat on your, in your refrigerator that tells you whether or not you went above a certain temperature, but it doesn't tell you over time. And so what we wanted to do is find some sort of a temperature sensor that would record the temperature over time so that we would know if we'd been gone for those two days, how many hours the temperature in the refrigerator went above the target temperature. So we did some studying on the internet and we came across a company called Sensor Push. We dropped them a note and they graciously sent us some gear and we're gonna go through that gear today. Okay, great. So this is the Sensor Push Smart Sensor. It measures humidity and temperature. And I'm just gonna go ahead and open the box and see what's inside. So this is pretty small. It's got, here's the instructions right here. And this is this little blue sensor. It's really small. It looks like you could even put it on a keychain if you wanted to with this little hole. Oh, look what's got in the back. And it's got a little sticker so we can mount it in the back. And what's great about this sensor is that we can just go ahead and put this right in our refrigerator and stick it where, you know, where we want to measure. And then we can just connect it uh, with the app on our phones and it uses both iOS and Android. And we don't need to have any power. We don't need to have anything else. We can just uh, tell the temperature right from our phone. So it'll be great if there's a power outage in the future. And do you know that thing stores 20 days of temperatures? So that even if you've been gone on vacation and you come back, if as long as under 20 days, you'll be able to bring up the app on your phone and look at all the temperature readings and see if it had a, a temperature problem. Great. All right, so we've got two of these, so we can put one in our fridge and one in our freezer, so we can know the temperatures in both. And this is a gateway, so well, let's go ahead and open this up. And this is nice, so here's the little sensor push gateway. And it's a little tiny Wi-Fi gateway box. So we can just hook this up to our router. Okay, can I see that? Oh, sure. Sorry. No, it's cool. <laughs> but now, what's really nice about this one here is that it has Bluetooth in it, so it can talk to the sensors. And it also has an Ethernet port, so if you want to plug it into your router at your house, you can do that. Or you can just use Wi-Fi. And I think having this the Wi-Fi is really the way to go because our router is a long way away from our refrigerator. So it's kind of nice and handy, and it does give you access to the Internet. So now, instead of 20 days, you continuously can check out what's happening inside your refrigerator. Oh, so great. So if our house goes down and the internet goes down like it did this time, um, we could still, and we weren't home, we could still monitor to see what happened um, during those temporary shutdowns if we're away. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. So we're going to take this and we're going to put the sensors in the refrigerator and in the freezer, and then we're going to hook up the gateway and uh, we'll show you how all that works. We'll show you how to install and uh, let's see how this thing really works. First of all, we have to download the app from the App Store and then uh, enable the Bluetooth because these things work on Bluetooth. We have to add the sensors to the application. So we're going to first add the sensor for the refrigerator. And it's very easy. Once you say add sensor, you just hold the sensor over your phone and in a little while it'll accept the uh, sensor into the system and then just give it a name. And then repeat the same thing again for the sensor that you put in the freezer. You want to open up the account screen and you'll see the Bluetooth is selected. So as long as you have your phone, you can access the sensors, just not remotely. Now let's set up the gateway so we can do remote access. Again, just click on add gateway. It does take about a minute to find the, uh, the gateway. Once that happens, then you will be asked to set up an account. So just your email and your password, your account is now set up. Uh, and then uh, sign into your local Wi-Fi network. Now, You've given the gateway access to the system, and uh, now you can give the gateway a name. So when you look at the account screen this time, you'll see that you, that you have your account name there and 
that uh, Bluetooth is no longer selected, that is because it's not needed anymore. The gateway will take care of talking to the sensors. So now you have access. Now you can export the data that you collect. You can look at the data over an hour, over a day, a week, a month, or a year, and that's really handy. You can also set up a temperature range to allow you to get alerts if you're not within that temperature range. We looked at our actual refrigerator temperature setup, added a couple of points to each of the temperatures to give the range we wanted to have to see what would work. And you're going to probably want to fuss with that a little bit depending on how variable the temperature is in your refrigerator or your freezer. Once that's done, everything is set up and you're ready to go. The first screen when you launch the app shows a summary of the sensors for both the temperature and the humidity. You can see if the temp is rising or falling and if the temp is in the range you set. The detail screens show a graph of the temperature and humidity. In our case, of course, the temperature changes over time due to the refrigerator cycling on and off. Sensor push does provide notifications, so if you do fall outside that range, you will get a notification on your phone. And if you happen to be in the app, it'll also show you a reminder giving you the temp and the time the event occurred. The app even allows you to select a point in the timeline to see the exact temp, date, and time. At the bottom of the screen, there's a chart that shows the distribution of the temperatures. We found this to be really handy to determine if we were mostly in the temperature range we wanted. And the screen also shows the level of the battery and other info to help you understand how well the sensor is working. In the middle of testing these sensors, we happened to experience several power outages, which allowed us to see how well these sensors performed in the real world. When the power shut off, several of our smart home devices that require the internet sent us notifications and emails from their cloud service supporting them, letting us know that the power was out. Well, in this case, that the internet was out because you don't know if it's a power shutdown or if it's the internet, unless of course you happen to be home like we were, so we knew that it was the power that had it turned off. So since the center, sensors work on Bluetooth, as long as we were home, we could still see the real temps from our phone. Before this, we had moved the refrigerator sensor to the top of the refrigerator, so the normal range of the refrigerator, of course, the temperatures rose up a little bit because at the top of the refrigerator, you get much higher temperatures than you do at the bottom. As you can see from these graphs over here, the power had been off for a while, but you watch it and you can see pre before the power shut off, the refrigerator and the freezer were doing just fine, going through their cycles. And then once the power went off, they could no longer, of course, keep that temperature range. And you can see here that the temperature started rising. And since the food spoils at 40 degrees for over two hours, we unloaded the refrigerator and bought, brought those items over to a friend's house. The freezer, however, lasted much longer. Matter of fact, I think it lasted around a day. And um, we waited for over that day to see if we needed to move the food. And once it, once it went above 32 degrees, we decided to move the food into a cooler. And then it lasted for the rest of the power outage. Uh, but after two days of no power, the, we were back in business. And as you can see, once the power came back on, the refrigerator cooled down. It took a few hours for that to happen. Uh, and then we moved the food back in. Uh, sensor push having the ability to store the sensor data for around 20 days and using our phone we knew what was happening at all times. But even if we hadn't been home, once we returned, we would know from the data if there had been any issues with our refrigerator. Thanks for watching our video today. We've included more information about the product, including links where to buy in the description field below. And while you're there, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos. And for more smart home stories, visit appmyhome.com. Thank you. Thank you.